Coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. We told you this before, and we're going to tell it to you straight again. Remember these three letters. K. R. O. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. We're going to head back to Utah. 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 Yep. Curl Ranch Outfitters. And I'm telling you what, we are in the thick of it. The bulls are bugling, the cows are ready, and so are we with our hoids. That's right. So we're just going to get going. I, I, and I get let in. I know. Okay. I'm just letting you know. Let's go. Last word. As the hunt continues at the Curl Ranch, Ralph and Vicki are transitioning from tree stands and ground blinds to spotting and stalking. Things are about to get up close and personal with these bugling bulls. We really wanted to, uh, to turn it into a spot and stalk hunt, but we weren't sure what the weather was gonna be doing. You know, we're planning a month ahead and then the smoke rolls in. Unfortunately, you know, Montana and Idaho and California are on fire and the smoke is just paraling in. And that smoke was blowing right over us. You were constantly in a haze. And so we decided to take the fight to them. We pulled everybody out of the stands and we started doing some spot and stock. So we took off that morning, went up, got all, all set up and just waited for bugles. It wasn't very long and all of a sudden we heard it. And the excitement, you know, your blood starts pumping and we're just kind of following. Greg and I discussed it like we're just gonna go in, try to really encroach on him, not let him know where we were coming. As we got closer in, you know, we did a little, Greg was cow calling and then I would just hit a bugle every once in a while. You know, we're simulating that it's it's a bull with some cows, right. and we're you know maybe infringing on this area, you know, this territory. And... Here's the only thing that we could try, and you tell me. We just stay on this trail, we'll go another 50 yards, we'll bugle, sort of. You go, go, because he ain't that far. No, but he doesn't want to come any further. If you walk with that. And I mean, it worked, that herd bull, we pulled that herd bull all the way. He's standing at 20 yards, 21 yards, something like that. I could see, I could whale, t I could see everything you could ask for on a big yeah. bull, except to shoot him. He's standing in that thick cover. The cover out there is so thick. I mean, we've had encounter after encounter oh. of where the bull will come in and he's standing there and he's close, now. he's within 20, 30 yards, he's within there and we can't get a shot. He literally would have had to come into about one yard for us to get a shot. It wasn't an optimal scenario for him to, to, to come in. So he, he, he went ahead and he turned around and he moved back with his cows. And so we just kind of kept moving real slow. And we ended up getting right in with his cows. 
there was one cow at about 10 yards, one cow at about 15 yards, and they were in kind of a semicircle all around us. And we sat there and, and bugled, and one of the satellite bulls came in with the cows, which then brought the herd bull over. It was thrilling. We didn't, we weren't provided with a shot, but you know, that, that experience alone was just awesome. My heart was racing. I could barely sit up. It was just, just incredible. Great time. Hey, that was awesome. We worked that herd bull away from all his cows. If we weren't in this structure, he'd have been dead. He was 25 yards. Broadside, broadside. Big ol' six point, oh. Heavy, he was beautiful. There was three or four yeah. different bowls. All, you know, the satellite bowl and him. And so to have him leave his cows. Oh, huge. The satellite bowls around. <laughs> that's, that's elk hunting at its premiere. You know, you're gonna say, well, we didn't shoot the opportunity. I mean, we pulled him away. Working in unison and getting him going. Greg, man, just cow calling, brought him, he just, and then he just, oh, he just stopped in that thick stuff. There ain't nothing we could do. I just want him to know we're just walking away. Okay, so the start of day six, we've got another great plan. We're gonna go back in there after that big growling bull. I mean, he came in so close, we had him, if it just hadn't have been the brush on day number five. We just hiked all the way up. We've got at least three different bulls bugling. One, two, and three. Our wind's coming off this way. And we're gonna try to get him before they get that big stuff like they did yesterday. So we head up in there, and the wind is, is going a little bit different, and so we've got to take a different entry route. So we go, we find a, a cattle trail, we head up it, go up there, and then we hit kind of a nice little bench, and we start working our way over. And so we're excited, we move in, we're getting into position, and he's bugling, and he's about 100 yards away. And there's another one that had popped off a couple times earlier that were, sounded really good too. Well, in the meantime, start doing some cow calling. We bring in a smaller bull. He comes right around. He's uh, just a nice little bull. But I, I mean, th this is what's so cool is, even though you're in the rut and these animals, they're going crazy, don't ever think their guard is down that they don't pay attention because mm -hmm. all of a sudden they get that sixth sense. Yep. And I mean, that's what's so cool is you could be at point blank range on a bull and it doesn't have to be elk, it could be moose, it could be anything. anything. And they just get that sense they and they hold know. up. And, and that, that's where the experience comes to either working them in or right. you know, if the wind swirls or something, you're, it's over with. But I mean, we had everything, Vic. That hunt was incredible. It was, it was really cool. After that, he went ahead and left, and then we thought, we're just gonna go and we're gonna check a few of the other wallows on the ranch, see if they've been hit, see if uh, you know if there's a lot of elk sign around them. You know, we've been spending so much time in this one area, we just thought, let's go see what, what else there is. We're doing this, we're driving around, and we're checking out some places that there's been wallows at, just to see if we can see more activity. We know where the bulls are at. We've been going after the same group over and over. We're thinking maybe this afternoon we won't go there. So we're kind of looking for a newer area, a new area for us to go to this afternoon to maybe try after some other ones. Either the other bulls are really outsmarting us or we just need to find something. No, actually, I think a big part of what we're having, what we happened this week is we had a full moon. So they weren't as active and it was warm. So it's one of those things where, you know, we had the double things going and 
So hopefully the moon is on the downside. It's much cooler outside. Hopefully this afternoon we'll get some. We're, we're kind of in the same area as where we had heard the bugles that morning. So we just thought, you know, what, we're just gonna stop, take a listen, just see if we hear anything. And literally five minutes after we stopped, boom, they started popping off. And we get into position and we're cow calling and bugling and that bull is, he's right there, but he's got cows with him and he's trying to protect them. And so we just kind of ended up following them all the way up to the head of this creek. And there we got set up. We'll stay our cow call while you scoot around over to that tree and see if he'll come out. I had the decoy set up and Vicky was set up in one spot, Ralph was in the other. Well, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this bull shows up 28 yards from Ralph. But he's facing him and he's in thick brush and he's actually up above Ralph a little bit, which makes for, you know, all the foliage is growing up. It just makes for a tough, tough hunt, tough shot, tough everything. The bull came in, he uh, then turned and walked back out. And that was our evening hunt. We're about out of light. Then we just had a five by five come in behind Ralph. They've been up there bugling. I don't think that's the one that's been bugling really loud up there. We're about done for the night. That bull came from Ralph, maybe a hair more, but it's going uphill. I don't think Ralph even had a shot. That was cool. Now at the tail end of the hunt, Ralph and Vicky decide to split up to increase their chances of taking a bull. While they have had numerous close encounters, their time in Utah is coming to a close, and experience has already proven worthwhile, even if they go home empty-handed. <laughs> Well guys, we're down, the countdown is on. We've been into elk like crazy. Uh, passed up on some, some beautiful five by fives just cause we're, well, we're, we're sort of holding off. We got Vicky up over um, where we were actually yesterday morning. Vicky's sitting in a water hole with Kyle. He, he, he's actually uh, with her. Um, Greg, Chad and I are gonna go up here in the elk wallows. And we're gonna sit and wait like we did last night let these bulls work themselves up because again, it's warm. And then we'll make our move on them. So we decided to split up that last day. Yep. Like we have one day left and we're gonna split up and you went out spotting us talking and I went and sat at a tree stand. I had Kylie filming me in the tree stand. You had Chad and Greg going out spotting yep. us talking and, and you guys got into it. Well, what we wanted to do, we wanted to work up on that, on that you know, that one mountainside where we had them bugling and they were bugling actually between all of us. We were working these elk and I mean, he was screaming. He, he was hot to trot and you know, we, we, we talked like, we're not gonna bugle too much. I wanna see if, you, you know what I mean? Right, and, if we're turning them away. And, and, and we weren't. But all of a sudden, we, we just figured, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna let them know we're here. And it lit him up.
Previously on Archer's Choice, Ralph and Guide Greg have called in a mature bull using a combination of bugles and cow mews. As the bull approaches, Ralph readies himself for a shot. It's not about filling that tag, saying, no. oh, we filled another tag. It's about all of us went crazy at that moment. We were high five and we're hugging. We're, we're yep. sharing that moment of time that everything just comes to a standstill. And, and while you guys are in the thick of that, Kylie and I were sitting there over that water hole. Oh. We had a cow come in and all of a sudden there, we watched that herd bull, that big guy come back down. He went in there. Oh. So we waited and we watched the herd bull and take all of his cows and he went right back up that hill. And then we got the text message that you shot and I was like, I'm done, let's get out of here. <laughs> Time to go, let's go check out Ralph's bull. Right there. He's right here. He's right there. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Short track. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, my goodness gracious. My first Utah bull. Oh. Thank you, Lord. KRO, baby. We were here last year. This year, we both, Vicky and I, drew bull tags, and look what we came with. Greg, Clint. Chris, I mean, we can't thank you guys enough. It's, we've had ups and downs, typical elk hunt, but I'm telling you what, we were into elk every single day. And now, we are taking home fresh elk meat. And a big bull. I just realized that in all the commotion, we, uh, it's September 11th. dedicate this animal to all the people, all the Americans that lost their lives. I want to dedicate this animal to all the first responders. I want to dedicate this animal to the police force, to the fire departments, to everyone. And, and folks, I mean, the bottom line here is we need to stop this fight amongst ourselves. We are Americans and we need to be proud of it. And we need to understand and respect each other. We have to look at each other and say we're brothers and sisters. Doesn't matter color, race, doesn't matter any of this. We are who we are. God put us on this planet to all embrace each other. This bull is gonna be lasting memory for my, for not only myself, but my family's lifetime. This is gonna be food on our table and in memory, September 11th. Congratulations. Thank you, honey. That I'm, was I'm, awesome. Oh, it was really cool. It just right place, right time. But yeah. we we had every aspect of elk hunting that you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. Ground blind, tree stand, you know, actually going in on foot, spot and stalk, but not hearing them. And then all of a sudden we were in the thick of it. And I mean, they were screaming everywhere, the cows, the bulls. We were literally- We had them running in at us. We had them hiding in the thickets. You have them, you have them at point bank range. Yes. And you can't shoot because the cover's too thick. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's- Yes. Kate. And you needed that. After being sick in Alaska, this is a good thing. He needed yeah. to get a bull. He didn't. Everyone thank at you. KRO, thank you guys so much for everything, for your friendship especially though, because that's what Bottom it's line is, you know, we've been very fortunate to travel and, and, and meet and, and meet a lot of people. Yep. You know, hunt incredible places. This is one of them that are on the top of the list. Absolutely. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel. Right here on the Archer's Choice.